With the return of Boba Fett to our screens in the Mandalorian series, it's been so good to see the Slave One fire spray attack craft in action again. It is such a unique looking spaceship and it occupies an important place in Star Wars pop culture. In terms of LEGO iterations of the Slave One, the UCS Slave One LEGO model released several years back is still to this day, in my opinion, the best and the most detailed version of this spacecraft built with LEGO. Hans, the designer for this model, has done a superb job at replicating the unique shaping, odd angles, colour scheme and overall look of the Slave One. However, there is one area of the model that is an eyesore, really lets the model down and does not at all look similar to the in-universe reference spacecraft. And that is the cowlings that are either side of the cockpit and the associated mechanical details connecting the stabiliser fins to the body of the model. If we take a look at the standard UCS LEGO model versus an image of the Slave One, you can see right away the LEGO version really misses the mark. We should see a recess in this area with the curved cowlings cupping over and housing the rotating internals of the Slave One. And we should see much improved details for the stabiliser fins and the connecting support arms. Charlie from Brick Vault picked this shortcoming up too and published a video quite a while back on mods that he designed to correct the model. He's done a great job with his mod design. The only issue is that he did not publish instructions on how to do the mods or a required parts list. Now I've studied Charlie's video on mods very closely and my intention for this video that you're watching now is to guide you through doing my crafted bricks version of Charlie's mods. And along the way, I've also made some improvements to the cockpit interior and the stabilizer fins to give this model the boost it needs to be a truly spectacular Ultimate Collector Series LEGO model. But don't worry, you do not need to study my video in detail to do these modifications. I've published instructions you can download for free from Rubricable. And on this page, there's going to be everything you need to know, including a listing of the additional parts you'll need to order from Bricklink for you to be able to modify and upgrade your own UCS Slave One LEGO model. Let's take a look at the key stages of doing these modifications that you'll need to do if you want to modify your own model. First, I'm going to cover off building the modified cowlings and internal mechanical details visible on the side walls of either side of the cockpit. After you've bought the necessary parts from Bricklink, to start with, you'll need to remove the original cowlings and stabilizer fins from the model. Then you'll need to partially disassemble the side walls of the cockpit to revert your model to what I've shown on screen here. After that, it's a matter of rebuilding the side walls of the cockpit back up with the alternate parts that I've listed in my step by step instructions. By the way, you will notice that I've added a floor and some alternate internal details to the cockpit of my model, mainly to cover the voids visible in the standard version of the model's cockpit. As I appreciate, not everyone will want to do my internal cockpit mods, and there were just changes that I freestyled. I've not included the cockpit changes in my step-by-step -step mod instructions, but what I will do is include an optional parts list and a studio model file on the rubricable page for my mods for the Slave One that will give you all the info you need if you want to do these optional cockpit changes to your model as well. Moving along, once you've rebuilt the sidewalls of the cockpit, there are some minor adjustments you'll need to make to the plate-built sloped sidewalls just to the rear of the cockpit to ensure the new cowlings fit and also that the internal Technic frame of the model is not visible. After that, it's just a matter of building and fitting the new sidewall mechanical and gribbling panels that I've designed to either side of the model. And next, you'll need to build, per my instructions, the dark green colored cowling sections and fit those off in sequence. Originally, I was just gonna simply fit back in the standard Lego design stabilizer fins like Charlie did, but I found that they needed more details and some color updates to be congruent with the new cowling and internal details. So I've given them an overhaul and the parts required and build instructions are included with my mods as published on Rubricable. Please note, I swapped out the yellow colored parts on the stabilizer fins for dark tan, but if you do want to keep the yellow, you can certainly keep the yellow parts when building my modified stabilizers. I feel like the new stabilizers look much better and after fitting them off and then building and fitting the new control arms, this series of changes really comes to life and immediately gives the whole model a more detailed and authentic look. Well, I'm extremely happy with these modifications and how my finished model looks now. And I particularly think that removing those original cowlings either side of the cockpit, they had visual details that seemed a little bit half-baked and weren't congruent with the rest of the beautiful details of the model has made a huge difference. I think using the modified cowlings, having all these internal details that I can see quite clearly, the modified control arms and the updated vertical stabilizers has made a huge difference to the detail of this model 
And I feel like now looking at the model from the top to the bottom, there's a consistent level of beauty and detail for this set, as we'd expect from an Ultimate Collector Series larger scale model like this. I'm also particularly happy that the updates that I've made to the vertical stabilizers work very well with the original details of the underside of the model. So that's something that I'm really happy with. To help give you a sense of the changes that I've made, I've taken some before and after photos. So let's take a look at those right now. This is what the model looks like before my modifications and now after, before once more, and now after again. Well, before I cut over to a scene where I've got the model rotating on my turntable so you can check out the mods in detail, it's my hope this video has inspired you to go ahead and make these modifications and upgrades to your own UCS Slave 1 Star Wars Lego set. I've put a couple of links in the description of the video. So I've linked to Charlie's original modification video if you want to check that out. And I've linked to, of course, the rubricable page where you'll find instructions for the modifications that I've put together that I've shown you in this video. And on that page is inventory of parts you will need to buy to do the modifications. All the information you need to do these mods will be on that page. If you do, however, have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section of this video or even a comment on the rubricable page. If you have a question, I certainly will read it and we'll get back to you. That's all for me for now. Thank you so much for watching. Happy modding, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. We got company. Hang on.